Hey, good evening and thank you very much for your time tonight. Good evening, Tawa. Are you well? I'm well. I hope you're well too at this time. <laughs> One day we'll all be fine, Tawa. Well, listen, uh, MEC, you've decided to go to Health Makar, but you've also noted all the other independent schools that have uh, decided to, to reopen during this time. And uh, the issue is, it's not about the ability for the private schools or the independent school to be able, able to carry out uh, learning because of the resources they have, but you, you've got an issue with uh, the movement. Tell me what's the scientific rationale behind uh, what you're calling for. Thanks for the opportunity, Tabo. Indeed, it's about the movement. Uh, you, you will recall that at the beginning of this year, when people returned uh, from other provinces after the holidays, uh, we had a surge uh, that our experts indicated that if nothing is done, we're going to struggle with hospital beds and other related support that we provide. Secondly, we had firms reopening because we are the economic hub of the country. So we had so many people coming back because firm, firms were reopening. Thirdly, were people that are coming from outside our borders that also arrived here. Uh, and we had serious problems. So they advised that if you open schools, we've got almost 2.3 million parents uh, that will have to come to our province as well. What they will do, they will go to malls to buy uh, school shoes, they'll go to malls to buy textbooks, they'll go to malls to buy all kinds of things because before schools will open, parents have to go to retail shops and all other things. That movement, uh, it was identified as a risk. Uh, it was within that context that we wrote to the national minister, the Houghton government, to say, we really believe we should delay by two weeks. And people say, why two weeks? Two weeks purely because uh, with our recovery rate and when our hospitals are under this pressure, after two weeks, uh, many people recover uh, from the virus and therefore we will allow hospitals to have a breather and then we can take extra numbers. So it was within that context that we took that decision. And when we started to hear there are some private institutions that are defying, are defying this court, we felt let's meet with them, let's hear them, uh, let's check what are the issues that they are raising with us. And when we went to uh, help make out this uh, morning, they indicated that after we've given them proper information, they felt that it will be in the interest of learners and everyone to to reschedule the reopening. And uh, we also met with Curo, and I must thank the group CEO of Curo because they were also adamant that they need to go ahead. Uh, after we've met with them, they've issued their communique uh, to ensure that they delay the reopening. We are struggling with one private institution called Advertech. Uh, we are quite aware that they've reopened. We are quite aware that they're insisting uh, to, to, to reopen. We would engage with them. Actually, we've already started to send our team to go and engage with and we are doing this not because we are doubting the capabilities of the schools uh, to manage uh, the virus uh, within the school premises, but it's beyond the school premises. It's the movement of parents, it's the movement of service providers, it's in the movement of transport providers uh, that we need to manage and manage carefully. Now, MEC, talk to me to the issue then that are being raised of the advance consequences of the delaying of the reopening, one being that You've got parents who are going back to work and you've got kids that are going to be left at home without no supervision. Uh, what what uh, should be then of those kids who will be at home and parents having to go back to work? That's the one area. The other issue that is being raised, of course, is the issue of the feeding program that you run at schools. And with kids now being at home, they will not be able to gain access to that nutrition that is particularly required. I, I like your first part parents that go to work. And by extension, it means those are the parents that need to fight for the hospital beds if they get sick. And what's the priority? Hospital beds or getting somebody to take care of your children. And our option is that hospital beds are more crucial. Uh, it's just like informing people that we're, we're, we're consuming alcohol, that uh, you can't consume alcohol because we need hospital beds. So it's a sacrifice that we need to pay. Uh, to ensure that our hospitals are, no, are not overburdened, but most importantly, our frontline staff, they can get a breather. Uh, and we're talking about two weeks, and that is why we said two weeks, because beyond two weeks, it will affect many people. Um, and, 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 and therefore, we didn't want to, 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 to burden uh, families purely because they would need to get alternative people to take care of children. But as long as parents are capable of going to work, there is an immediate need that at one stage they might want to go to hospital. They will need the oxygen 
at the hospital, they will need the hospital beds, and therefore we need to take care and ensure that uh, those uh, those facilities are available to parents. So if you're if you're talking MEC to parents with resources, I probably would understand uh, th that point of view, but. Parents who have to work, not necessarily because they've got an abundance of resources, what is the breather for them? Because now they have to, as you put it, uh, get alternatives and actually hire somebody to be able to look after their kids and pay that somebody to look after those kids. We must not behave that parents have not been having learners at home. Uh, we are coming from uh, school holidays. We are just extending them and extending them by two weeks. Um, and, and, and that also goes to the school nutrition. Our approach is that we need to give support to those learners that need school nutrition because indeed it's a very important way. We have made arrangements in our province uh, that uh, from the 25th, uh, when, when, when the schools are supposed to, to reopen, we'll provide all the relevant support that is needed to those learners so that we don't delay them or and ensure that they are ravaged by poverty. So we will continue and we will also encourage other provinces to do so. But besides, it's not a choice. We've got a court case that compels us that uh, during school holidays, uh, if we postpone school, uh, uh, school during those days, we need to provide the necessary support to those tenants. Now, is this an appeal or is this a demand on the schools? Uh, because, uh, of course, I've learned earlier on that this uh, particular directive has not been gazetted yet. I don't know if that situation has improved. It has been rectified. I think there's a process of gazetting. We didn't want to go that way. Uh, remember, before we made the public announcement, we, 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 we consulted with the private school institutions, organizations that represent the private school institutions, and they immediately accepted the proposal. So we saw no need to gazette uh, because it was a mutual agreement. But unfortunately, some of those uh, representatives that are representing private schools, they don't represent all the private schools. I think that's the loophole. Uh, and that is why some of the private schools said they were not aware and they were not represented or they were not consulted. But because we really believe we can't allow people to defy unnecessarily and the virus is ravaging, the virus is amongst us, it's all over. Uh, we know people that are dying, we know people that are infected. So we can't just be uh, uh, dilly dallying uh, with a serious uh, virus. We need to take a decision, be firm with our government, and uh, as government, we have to use laws and regulations to ensure that uh, your decision can be respected. And it's within that context that we also advise the minister to start gazetting this decision because if you can't gazette it, we'll have to that multi fires. So, so far, I think I'm aware that uh, that process was at one stage. I've not checked because I've been uh, at work for, for quite some time, but I think either, either this evening or later tomorrow, or oh, it has already been gazetted. So, if it's gazetted in terms of the disaster act, it means whoever defies us, we can go to the nearest police station and open a case, and the law enforcement agencies will deal with that principal or school management. Yeah, that's, that's the part that I was coming to. I mean, you have uh, engaged with Help Makar, you have engaged with Kuro uh, on an understanding basis, but you're saying you are continuing to monitor other independent schools that might be uh, defined and you're going to take action. So that action, you're saying it will be opening a criminal case against those schools. Well, the Disaster Act is the act that is assisting us to manage the virus. I mean, uh, it does not mean that people that are drinking alcohol, they like the laws, but they're respecting it because they understand why we've taken that decision. It doesn't mean that people that are owning restaurants, they like the idea that by nine o'clock they must shut down. They do so because they understand the situation that we are in. So everyone, including these private institutions, they must understand we are not hating them. We are not saying they must not teach. Uh, we are just saying let's delay so that uh, our frontline staff and our health institution can have a breather. And within that, uh, we'll be in a position to manage the virus. The virus is real. It's amongst us. It's killing people that we love. Uh, and uh, there's no way, therefore, that uh, we will romanticize the need to be firm and the need to ensure that we push back this virus and, and that the numbers are not increasing recklessly. The two schools that you mentioned have reconsidered their decision to reopen. However, they have opened and migrated to, to online. Do you foresee challenges that will come from that, which, of course, have been mentioned even earlier during lockdown level five, to say a lot of the learners without the necessary resources are being left behind. Well, online is the future. Uh, so if government is delaying to move or to migrate online, you can't stop other people that have moved on that particular platform. Uh, it, it, it's, unfortunately, it exposes government uh, that we are still lacking behind. We still need to move towards that direction. In Fauti, we are moving towards that direction of invested 
uh, even though with challenges and limitations, but have invested a lot of resources. So what we are doing during these two weeks, we are engaging broadcasters, uh, the public broadcaster, some radio stations, so that uh, learners that don't have access uh, to devices and data and other things, we can use uh, that platform. You'll recall during the December holidays or November holidays, we're using these broadcasters uh, for revision and other lessons for, to our learners. So we'll continue with that process. We hope it will minimize uh, the gap between the rich and the poor. I have taken MEC for education. I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us tonight on the Newsfeed Late Night. That is Banyaza Lesufi. There are actions are being taken as far as enforcing and ensuring that independent schools comply with the directive as issued by the Department of Basic Education.